So let's go on a date, me and you, by going to our respective houses and programming all night without communicating with one another. Don't worry, it will be plenty romantic. We'll be drawing hearts. Let's start simple, a circle of radius r. Obviously, there are plenty of equations that represent this circle. For example, we could say that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Unfortunately, when we solve for, for example, x, we find that x equals the square root of r squared minus y squared, which means that for any given point along the x-axis, there are two points along the y-axis. And this is sometimes a little difficult to deal with. So we can instead introduce another parameter, theta, which sweeps around the circle, and define x as r times cosine of theta and y as r times sine of theta. Now, this is for the simple case of a circle, but we can create more complicated shapes simply by manipulating x, y, r, and theta. Okay, so let's see what this looks like in code. For the most part, the only things we're going to need to include are IOStream, some sort of vector library, and a visualization library. Now, we'll need some sort of struct to hold an x and a y value, but this is already within my visualization library. So, let's go ahead and int main. We need a few variables. One is going to be the resolution, the number of points we want along the shape. Then we're going to need a double value for both r and theta. Now we're going to initialize the vector for our shape to be of size resolution. And now all we need is a loop that goes through each point on our shape and defines it. So now all we need to do is sweep through all of the values for theta from 0 to 2 pi and define our shape's x location to be equal to r cosine of theta and our shape's y location to be equal to r sine of theta. And that's that. Our shape is actually done, we just need to draw it. And of course, when we run the code, we get a perfect circle. But I don't want a perfect circle. I want to capture your heart. I mean, this is a date after all, right? So how exactly do we start modifying our shape? Well, like I said before, we have a bunch of parameters to twiddle. We've got x, y, r, and theta. So let's start with r. What if r were a function of theta equal to one minus sine of theta? When we run it, we get something that is closer to a heart, but not quite there yet. So I guess let's go ahead and remove that line and maybe switch the formulas for x and y. Oh, well, now we're back to a circle. Let's try something else. What if we cube our formula for x? Well, that's definitely closer, but only the bottom half of it. The top half is still screwed up. Okay, okay, I know this sounds crazy, but what if we give y another cosine, but with twice the frequency? Uh-huh. We got it, it's a heart. It's upside down, but it is still a heart. <laughs> now, obviously, as we keep playing with these equations, we can get better and better approximations for a heart, like this one, which was shamelessly stolen off of Wolfram Alpha. Honestly, this is where the fun in programming comes in, messing around with random parameters and trying to figure out what does and doesn't work. I hope, if nothing else, I've inspired you to pop up a terminal and try it for yourself. Well, that was pretty fun. Let's do it again sometime. Feel free to leave your thoughts and your favorite heart equation in the comment section below. And if you're currently considering other people after our, uh, date, feel free to click on this video here to figure out which educational YouTuber is for you. Outside of that, thank you so much for coming in and I will see you next time. Toodles.